What's up guys, welcome to Babushka Land. Today I'm going to show you how to make an AFK rocket farm. Typically I only do my builds on survival. And in fact, I have done this build all on survival. However, being able to fly and show you the rocket farm from far away is a nice touch, I think. So that's why, that's why this is happening. So I promise you this is just a copy. Anyway, this rocket factory is comprised of this gigantic creeper slash gunpowder farm in front of me. And below it, in the AFK platform, I have attached a zero-tick sugarcane farm. This video is going to be a compilation video where I have included the creeper slash gunpowder farm, as well as the zero-tick sugarcane farm over here. If you are standing at the AFK spot below, this creeper farm will spawn creepers, zombies, as well as spiders. They will flow through the water, fall through these holes, and get killed by these tridents. The XP will filter down to this spot right here. If you stand on this spot, you will get the maximum amount of drops and XP. If you leave the sugarcane farm on, it will produce a bunch of kelp, which will filter through these composters, and will shoot through this dispenser in order to produce a bunch of sugarcane. You can then take the sugarcane make it into paper, and combine it with gunpowder to make lots of rockets. This rocket farm will give you more than enough rockets that you will need for your survival game. As long as you stand at that spot, you will have rockets for days. What's up, party people? Welcome to Babushka Land. Today, I'm going to show you how to make this massive, massive, efficient creeper and mob killing machine. This machine will allow you to stay AFK underneath it, and will continuously spawn creepers and other mobs. It can be turned on and off with the flick of this lever here. These tridents will then kill all of the mobs that end up in your farm. The items in EXP will filter down through the water here. The items will fall into these hoppers, as you can see, as well as the EXP. If you stand on this spot here, you will gain EXP, and if you open the treasure chest, you will see the items that drop. Now, I had left myself AFK for a few hours. I had all the items that you see here. I did, however, end up falling off of this platform and killing myself, so I lost my very high level 72. Uh, however, over the last two hours where I've been cooking dinner, I've actually recuperated about 33 levels, so I would consider that pretty good. This farm, originally made by Golden Helmet 403, I'll link to him in the description below, is a massive undertaking. You are going to need all of the materials that I have listed on the screen here. If I were you, I would make sure I bring extra. I brought a lot of extra items. I brought way more stacks than I actually needed because this project is being built in the sky 150 blocks above the ground. So if you don't bring extra items that you feel you can let go of, you're gonna go up and down over and over again and it's going to waste hours of your time when you're building this project. I will copy and paste the required items in the description below. We're going to create a gigantic contraption that will hopefully mostly kill creepers. There was another video that somebody else did saying that this was the best creeper farm on bedrock so we're going to try and make it and see how that goes. This farm is going to require a lot of materials. I have six shulker boxes here completely filled with everything I'll need and a little bit extra and I've also brought a couple shulker boxes with some extra materials as well just in case. I'm going to start off by towering 160 blocks in the air. You only really need to tower 150 blocks above the highest block that's in your area but just in case I'm going to go a little extra higher. Once you're at the top you're going to want to build yourself a platform. This platform is actually not part of the build. I just want a base of operations where I can put all my shulker boxes so I can start building from there. Also, I assume that you're going to be building this on survival mode, as I am. So if you're doing this on survival mode, it's going to be key to have a platform so that you can put a bed up here. I'd also torch the area up as well. Once you've made your platform, go back to your scaffolding. Build two blocks out, put a trap door on top, and on top of that, you can place a temporary treasure chest and throw a hopper on top. 
Later on, this is going to be your AFK spot. From here, build up 21 layers of scaffolding. Once you get to the top, place a block like this, then a fence block, then on the side, you can attach some glass, and another block like so, then put a fence on top of that. Hop on top of the glass and build out three blocks, and then three in each direction. At the end of each one, pop a magma block down. So one, two, three, then a magma block, and do the same on the other side. One, two, three, magma block. One, two, three, magma block. All right, so you should start to get an H looking formation like this. Okay, so this is gonna be your kill floor and now we're going to outline it. Once you've gotten your outline, put some water on top of each block of magma. Next, outline the top with some glass. Just in case you haven't realized it yet, I have copy and pasted the materials list into the description below. I hope that will be helpful for you. Next, take out this block here, and this one here. Place three blocks here, and one block here. Put a temporary block here, put a block there, get rid of this one. Grab your repeater, place it here, set it to two ticks. Grab some redstone dust, put some here, put some here. Put a torch there. Put a torch here. Next, hop on top of the glass and put a piston there. And put a piston facing up this way here. Once the pistons are moving like I do when I hang out with your mother, you can put a lever right here to shut them off. Okay, so you're going to be able to turn them on and off very easily. Here's a far out view. Once that's finished, you can build up a little bit here. So we're going to make some plus signs on each side. And we're going to throw some glass on the inside like this. That's where the sand is going to rest. Afterwards, you can make it so that the water is contained in a little tube like so. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So it should all look like this now. Grab a soul torch, put it in the middle, and put two slabs over here. Now we're going to build up the trident area. So you can fill up some more glass here, and then just build up two on each side of the piston.
Once that's done, you can throw the tridents just above the pistons. Test to see if it's working by flipping the lever. So that's probably not too mob friendly, which is exactly what we want. Next, you can build out eight blocks. And then up five. From here, make sure you have a lot of stone bricks. Place one in front of you and then build out nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to build a 19 by 19 platform. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 18 should be correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then I should be able to meet this guy right here. But it looks like I miscounted somehow. Anyway, that's fine. That's exactly where I want it. And we can go ahead and fill this in about three layers inside. Once you've built three layers inward, find the drop shoots and go to the innermost glass block. Once you're done doing that, fill the rest of the area in with blocks. You're going to leave a hole underneath the magma. Once you've filled everything in, you should have an even square with four holes and four pieces of sand. When your square is complete, go down to your base of operations platform and grab all of your shulker boxes and your bed. You can leave this here for now and just move on up top. First, place your bed and set your respawn point just in case you do something stupid. Then place your shulker boxes. Now that your base is set up top, grab some temporary blocks and cover up these holes. You don't want to fall in there and die, so you know, probably a good idea. Oh, wrong hole, <laughs> wrong hole, get it? <laughs> so funny. Throw some cactus on the sand and light up the area so monsters don't spawn while you are working. Next, grab your iron bars, go to the corner, place one, and build a fence all along the perimeter until you get to the next corner and put an iron bar down. Continue along like so, and we can just repeat that process until we have covered the entire platform. Oh, we're going to skip over the area with the scaffolding. 
When you get to the area with the scaffolding, just place a fence gate. Once your perimeter is set up, go to the corner, place a fence on top of every other fence post. Once you realize you've counted something wrong, be thankful you've brought extra blocks. Right, once you're done with that, head back to your scaffolding, pop a fence gate on top of your fence gate, open that baby up, and tower up. Go ahead and start to build the next layer on top of your first layer. Once you're done building the second layer, double check if the holes are directly above your cactuses, then go back down. Collect all your shulker boxes, and move your base of operations up one floor. Make sure you set that bed down for that respawn point and you definitely click on that bed. Then you're gonna head back down with lots of trap doors and scaffolding. All right, head back down and with your trap doors, go between each fence on the second level, I guess, and place a trap door. Once you make a perimeter with trap doors, then you're gonna skip one row on each side and then make another square of trap doors every other block. Once you get to the block directly above your cactus, just shift click on a nearby trap door, get one directly above it so it covers the hole and then delete that one there. Once you've placed everything, double check and make sure you didn't miss any spots. Come up to your second layer, build out a little bit, and build out like so. Because I forgot to tell you to make an infinite water source. So, sorry if you had to go down to get water, but now at least you won't have to go down over and over again. Next, we're going to grab our scaffolding and outline the perimeter where the fence is. It should only be one high. And the scaffolding should be only where there is no trap door. So, on the next row, you're going to put one in every place where there's no trap door. So that should be every other block. And then, since there's no trap doors in the next row, you're just going to make a full row of trap doors. So go make 17 buckets, or don't make 17 buckets if you want to go back and forth, but you're going to need 17 buckets of water to fill each floor. Also, it might be good if you have a Death Strider 3 on your shoes. Uh, I would assume you do at this point, since it's pretty late game. Head to the corner, face the ceiling, and play some water. Actually, where you have those temporary blocks, you can place some fence gates, like so, and open them up. You're going to need to do that. Which means, I guess you're going to have to make a bunch of fence gates. Right here as well. Boom. And now go to the corners and fill them all in with water.
Once you've done that, make your way to the middle, and you will see that there is four places where you need to place water as well. Go to the end of the platform and place it in the furthest block out to the middle. So these ones all go above the scaffolding. Once you've placed those, I think it's a good time to make a copy of your game. Because now is a really easy time to die now that the kill floors are open and you could get pushed in by the water you're placing down. Okay, come right back to the center and go towards one of your water sources. So this, this is exactly where the water source is. We're going to go one, two, and take out the scaffolding and place a water source there. Okay, you can go back to the middle and go to the corner. So your water source block is directly here. Then you're going to go one, two, Take out the scaffolding and place another water source block. So I just fell in here and realized I could not fall in by closing these fences. So I'm going to do that for the top fences uh, so that I don't fall into the magma and die. Anyway, go to the center and come out to here so there's a water source here there's not one there and there's not one here and this is where it needs to go one check over here okay this one is placed in this corner I'm gonna go to source here Once you've dealt with those very confusing corners and sides, break the middle scaffolding, place a water source at the bottom and at the top. Basically, if you stand at any spot, you should be eventually dragged into the magma. So you might want to double check that for yourself. For example, here, I might not have done it properly. Although that'll... No, that would definitely kill me if I was a mob. Alright, so you should be all set. Go through and check if you're... If you left any torches down on the ground. Once you're done checking for torches, open up your fence gates. get out of there so just like that your first layer is complete so on the second layer here I have placed wooden blocks exactly where you need to place water blocks so I hope that helps you out including the two blocks I'm standing on you need a water source on the ground and above the ground in the middle and then on the outermost layer they're all above the ground and in the inner outer layer they're on the ground. Next thing you're going to want to do is clear out a block on the outside of where your cactus is so that you'll have a clear shoot all the way down to the magma kill chamber area. So from there, go ahead, grab your sand, and place a cactus on top of it. So yeah, your second layer is going to look like this for a little bit. And we'll fill everything. I'm going to try and fill everything in with scaffolding first, and then maybe do the third layer uh, platform after that. So if you're looking for a grid layout, 
uh, for how to do the scaffolding. Here's a good shot. You might want to pause the video here and follow this pattern. Just like so. So once you've got your scaffolding laid out, head to the chutes and put some fences on them. So now that I'm this far, I'm going to build the platform on top. So now that the platform's complete, I'm going to cover up the chute areas. Okay, grab a bunch of trap doors. There's some trap doors. It's like one, two, three, three. There we go. You're just going to put trap doors in all the areas where there is no scaffolding. I guess above where there is no scaffolding. I'm just working my way from the outside inward. Once you get to the cactus, place a trap door temporarily there, place one directly above it, and break the temporary one. Make sure you also place trap doors between the fences on the outside perimeter. Once you've done that, you can go and get your water. Make sure you've placed all your trap doors correctly, do a double take. And once you've done that, you can start replacing the temporary blocks that you've placed with water sources. Don't forget the water source at the entrance. While you're still down here, go to where your fence gates are and take out your temporary blocks. Might be a bit of a challenge. Boom, got one. This is why you really need Death Strider. Two. Three. I've got my four chutes placed. And I've got my fences. Oh, sorry, I think it's better if these are closed rather than open. I feel like they might block entities. So yeah. So eventually you're going to have seven floors where monsters can spawn. Before we work on the final touches, I want to do a little bit of troubleshooting. On the first layer here, I have water everywhere I need it. So water is flowing through all of these, uh, water flowing on top of all of the scaffolding, uh, or it's guiding monsters to places where they will eventually be killed. Now, on the second layer, I have the exact same situation, except for a couple pieces here and there, but I think this is still pretty good. I guess it looks like I've forgotten to uh, take out this here and put some water in the middle there so I will go ahead and do that. So in the second layer I was definitely missing water on the bottom here and water on the top here. So that should improve the way things flow. I guess these monsters that get stuck here will eventually get killed by this uh, cactus, so that's perfect. Once you've double checked and made sure everything is going right on the inside of your farm, you can then come up to the roof and finish it off. So plug up these holes. We're not going to build any more layers. Then build out one, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to build out six on each side. Two, three, four, five, six. Just fill this area in and count back. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to start here, build out one, two, three, four, five, six.
Then once you've built out, you can fill the corners in like this. Holy crap, I've actually run out of stone. I have to go, go down and get more stone. After you moved your roof out six tiles and filled in the corners, you can then cover it with slabs. After you put the slabs on, no monsters will be able to spawn on your gunpowder machine. And that's it. Once it's completely covered in, covered in slabs, you can head down, knock this out, fill in the last roof tile. I guess I'm just going to fill this in with more slabs. And yeah, you can shut the gates as you go down. Take apart your temporary platforms. Get rid of your infinite water source if you haven't already. Yeah, as you can see, the EXP is just falling down, and so is the gunpowder. Going all straight to me. Alright, so I've built a little uh, storage system. I'll probably modify this into a much better one in the future. But, if you stand here, you should be able to collect some EXP, and you should see a lot of items starting to flow into this chest. I actually ended up collecting over 64 uh, gunpowder just in the last few minutes while I was here. So I'm going to leave this AFK for a little bit and come back, and we will see what happens. So I've been AFK for about 25 minutes, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 stacks of gunpowder, plus 17, and a bit of string some bones arrows bows okay so i guess you get some zombie items some skeleton items but mostly creeper and spider items for sure and it looks like the gunpowder drops are pretty good since i've been playing i've only really collected like 80 something gunpowder in total maybe 100 something gunpowder in total and this farm after 20 minutes has already supplied me with much more gunpowder than I've gotten from killing monsters. I'm also now level 38 and I think I started when I was around level 5 or 6 or something. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, shout out to Golden Helmet 403. So a quick update for 1.20. The farm is still working. It's working very well. As you can see, I'm level 102, so I've been collecting a lot of EXP. I've been collecting a lot of gunpowder. Yeah, I've been converting the string into wool, so I so what you see here is not actually representative of the ratio of drops between gunpowder and string. It's closer to about 60% gunpowder and 40% string. Another thing here I noticed is that the fence now connects to glass blocks. So if we turn this on and we kill some of these creepers. I mean, it's flowing right now, but the items can definitely potentially be stuck and also misdirected. So in order to rectify that problem, we're going to take these glass blocks out and replace them with leaves. The leaves do not connect to the fence, so you don't have to delete the fence just in case you decide to stand here and fall down for some reason. The good news is this farm works very well in the new 1.20 update. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found this helpful. This mob farm has certainly been a great addition to Babushka Land because now I have more gunpowder than I know what to do with. Hello and welcome to Babushka Land. Today I'm going to show you how to make chunk borders visible. First you're going to go to mcpedl.com. Next you're going to go to the search box and type in chunk. You're going to click on chunk visualizer. Funny enough we're actually going to ignore this guy's download and we're going to scroll down to this part where it says compatible with Mad Hatter and Ambience Chunk Borders. We're going to click on that and it's going to take us to this GitHub page. From here, we are going to go to download latest release. Click on that, grab this pack here. You're going to put it into your downloads and it's going to say Bedrock Chunk Borders Pack. Okay, you can go to your downloads from there and click Bedrock Chunk Borders Pack. Okay, that's gonna import it into Minecraft. In this case, I have a duplicate pack because I've already imported it. 
but if it's the first time it will not fail it will just import it normally exit your game if you're on realms go to settings here edit world resource packs go to my packs and activate hatter's chunk pack now go into your world okay once you enter your world grab a firework or a rocket and go into third person and from there your chunks will be visible and that's it now you can figure out how to do redstone stuff inside of chunks what's up boys and girls welcome to babushka land today i'm going to show you how to make a zero tick sugarcane farm all inside of one chunk when you switch this farm on it's going to produce a massive amount of kelp which will then go through these hoppers into these composters and it will be moved into this dispenser here which is set off by this clock which will shoot bone meal at the sugarcane here which will cause the sugarcane to grow be detected by this observer and pushed into this hopper you will find the sugarcane on the side over here as it's being produced you will need one dispenser one observer seven hoppers one redstone comparator three redstone repeaters three redstone torches 16 redstone dust three pistons two sticky pistons one lever one sugar cane two trap doors one two two and a half stacks of whatever block you want four glass panes five sand one stair three buckets of water two composters some scaffolding two kelp and six glass blocks first make sure you have a chunk visualizer i previously made a video on how to get a chunk visualizer into your minecraft world a link to that video will be in the description below so figure out where your chunk is then move in one two three blocks make a hole and put in two chests you will need that later on you can put a hopper there and from there set down any sort of block one two three four down just like so and from here you can build a six by six platform we're going to go out one two three and one two three and we're going to go one two three four five perfect okay go in one block and build out one two three four and go to the other side and put eight blocks down like this i'm going to throw one on top here temporarily put that there put this here and we're going to take this out next grab a lever pop it here grab a redstone torch put it there and put one repeater facing this way like so afterwards grab some redstone dust and start to make a trail it's going to go up this way and around the back like so from there you can grab two sticky pistons and paste them out like this if everything works they should be moving in and out just like that grab some sand put it in front of the sticky pistons and also on top just like that come up behind and place some regular blocks on top of the pistons and two more on top of them then place some pistons facing towards you just like so next we can fill in one block here tower up with some scaffolding and fill in a wall that kind of goes up just above your pistons Do the same thing on this side. Just like so. Now we can fill in the front area. Gonna have to scaffold up a little bit here too. So that it all comes out like this. Next, we can grab some composters, put them like this, and we can place some hoppers going into the composters. So just jump to the other side and then shift click on the composters. 
After it should look like this. Once your hoppers are placed, build up some more blocks around them. Put some glass panes on the inside here, just like that, and fill in the top. So it should look like this. Next, come to the back. We're going to scaffold up a little bit from here. Place a block at the edge of the redstone here. Place a redstone torch on top of that. Place another block on top of that. Place a redstone torch on top of that block. Place another block up here. You can go up a little bit higher. Place two blocks behind the pistons. Put some redstone on top of those blocks. Connect your scaffolding. Walk over here. You can put two blocks in here. Actually, since these are sticking out, let's take this redstone out here. I want these guys in for now. We're going to place some water here and here. And we're going to put some trap doors out, just like so. Plant two pieces of kelp in the sand down in the water. Come to the backside and put your redstone down. The trap door should open and the piston should extend outwards. So you can take out your scaffolding on the front side and let's see if this works. Alright, so we got a lot of kelp being made. That's perfect. So the kelp is growing very fast and it's being sent into these hoppers, which are sending the kelp into these composters and now they are making bone meal. If I click on this, I get a bone meal. If I click on this, I get a bone meal. So that's great. We have a decently fast kelp production here. And now we're going to move on to the sugarcane part of the farm. So fill this area in with some blocks. You can pop an upside down stair above the treasure chest so you can open it anytime. So you can take this block out here, put a piece of sand there, take this one out here and put some water in. Grab a sugar cane and put it on top of the sand here. Grab a dispenser and place it so it's facing the sugar cane. So the mouth should be here so it can shoot the bone meal at the sugar cane. You can now place a block here, place a block here as well. Grab a piston, face it towards the sugar cane, and we want to come around the backside. Place an observer right here. The red part should be out here, that's its butthole. You want to attach a block just behind it where the piston is, then put a redstone on top of that block. If the observer is facing the sugar cane, what's going to happen is when the sugar cane grows to three tall, the observer will see it, send a signal out its butthole, and that will send a signal to this piston, which will then destroy the sugar cane and push it into this hopper. It will then collect inside of this chest here. Next, go to the right side, crouch down, and attach a hopper to the dispenser. Keep that hopper line going and attach it to the composter. Go to the other side and attach it to the other composter. At this point, you should see bone meal collecting inside of your dispenser. Now you can build these walls up on this side and on this side as well. Up to over here. All right, from here, place a line of blocks in front and extend the walls out like so. Grab some glass blocks and place them in front, just like that. You can scaffold up on the other side and just fill everything in. So if I'm ever up here, I want to see it from the top. I'm going to put some glass on top like that, and I'm going to put this smooth stone down like so. Okay, excellent. If you want, you can clear these excess blocks, or you can build around it and uh, house this somehow. I'm just going to take everything out that's kind of extra. Once you've completed this basic structure and there is plenty of kelp being produced, you're gonna have to create a redstone clock for this dispenser here. So this dispenser can continuously shoot bone meal at the sugar cane. So you're gonna make a three by three platform coming out from the dispenser, just like so. From here, grab a redstone comparator, turn around and pop it down just like that. Next, throw a repeater down like this. And after that, we're gonna grab some redstone and go around this way and put a repeater down right here. Okay. 
Now you're going to see the bone meal shooting out and the sugar cane is going to be produced. You can always take this block out here if you want closer access to the treasure chest or you can swing around from this side and open it up like that. I'm going to be coming around from the left side because I think it just looks better if it's housed like this. So from here the entire farm is complete. All you need to do to turn it on is turn on this lever right here and it's going to make some noise and it will continuously produce kelp here which will then be turned into bone meal which will then be sent to this dispenser and this redstone clock will power the dispenser cause the dispenser to shoot the bone meal at the sugar cane here and the sugar cane will be smashed by this piston which will then send the sugar cane into this treasure chest. And since this entire contraption is attached to my gunpowder farm, I can now take the sugar cane, turn it into paper, grab gunpowder, and turn it into fireworks. Now if I stand on this spot right here, I'm gonna get EXP and I'm also gonna get sugar cane at the same time. So I now have an unlimited fireworks farm. Hello and welcome to Babushka Land. Today we're going to do a little bit of troubleshooting for the rocket farm. So far I've made a video on how to build this gunpowder slash creeper farm up there. It's producing a massive amount of gunpowder, that's for sure. There's a mix of items that come out, so I have been taking out the string, the bone, the rotten flesh and the arrows. As you can see, my machine has completely overfilled. For example, if I jump onto this hopper here, I now have yeah, two stacks of gunpowder and more than one stack of string. And I've just been letting those items disappear because there's just simply too many. So that's a good sign. The, uh, the production is very high. So over here, we have a zero tick sugarcane farm. So over here, there is a kelp production area, which sends kelp into these composters in front of me, which converts the kelp into bone meal, which sends the bone meal into the sugar cane, and the sugar cane should be breaking here. But clearly, we have some issues that need to be resolved. So I'm going to show you what I found so far, as far as issues go over here, that are completely fixable. The sand will fall, and it will render the kelp production completely unavailable. So I've stuck a door right here, which is probably something you want to do. I guess I have some extra sand here now, that's fine. Then I've put the scaffolding up here, but you could also put a ladder. And I've included some extra kelp, just in case kelp needs to be planted. So every once in a while I have to jump down there and plant some kelp. I'm going to turn the farm off so it makes less noise. But every once in a while I'll come in here and I'll notice that this sand up there has fallen, or the sand from these pistons has fallen. And I will have to take it out from here. And then I'll come through this uh, window here where the repeater is and I will put the sand back where it came from. And over here I might have to replace the sand and replant the kelp. So that's a very common problem and once you plant it you can just turn the machine back on and it will start working again. Now over here I guess the observer didn't observe the sugarcane growth and therefore I have a bunch of bone meal stuck here that's not being dispensed because the sugarcane has grown too high. So I think that's an easily resolvable problem. I'm just going to come in through the side, actually. We'll go through the side right here and just break that. And look at that. The sugarcane farm is immediately working. However, I'm going to pause it for the moment. So in order to stop the dispenser from working, I can just break this block here and temporarily it will stop working. So I did get a comment from somebody called Morg TGM that said, you lose some cane with a hopper. If you were to place the cane on a mud block, then a hopper underneath, it would collect all the cane. This is because the mud block isn't counted as a full block, so it allows items to pass through the hopper. And you know what? There is a lot of sugar cane sitting on top of the sand here. So why don't we try that out and see if it actually works? It's been slowly collecting sugarcane, which is definitely more than enough for fireworks. But you know what? An upgrade is always an upgrade. So let's do it. I'm going to take the sugarcane out. There's only air underneath this. <laughs> underneath this block. There's only air underneath this block here. 
So once I take it out, there's going to be a big flow going, uh, going down to the ground, as you can see. But I can always attach a hopper here and throw a mud block on top of that and see if this works out. All right, so I've got my hopper. This might be a bit of a challenge. You know what? Maybe I'll just take these out. Now I can stand here. Okay, so there we go. I just got to make sure that hopper is connected. I'll throw some wood inside of it and see if it's going into the chest. Yes, it is. That's perfect. Now I'm just going to build back this wall a little bit. Then let's throw that mud block down. Put a sugar cane on top of it. Now I'm going to fill in this wall again and get rid of this. Throw this extra sugar cane in the chest. Now all I have to do is place the smooth stone back here in the uh, redstone clock and see if he's right. Okay, so I'm not seeing any sugar cane sit on top of the uh, mud block here. It looks like that hopper underneath is actually sucking up the sugar cane. But yeah, that's fantastic. I'm seeing sugar cane come in way faster than before. And that is a big upgrade. So there we go. Thank you so much to, uh, what was the name again? Morg TGM. Yeah, thank you so much to Morg TGM for helping us out in uh, fixing the sugar cane farm. That's perfect. Okay, so at this point, I guess it's run out and the farm is off. So I'm just going to switch that back on and production should start running.